Sherlock starts solving random cases waiting for the new Moriarty to show up, the baby exists, and some kid cosplays as a car seat and then dies and then his corpse gets blown up. John sort of cheating on Mary, but also some assholes breaking into people's houses and crushing Margaret Thatcher heads. Turns out Mary was part of an assassin team who carried around thumb drives with secret info on them and one of Mary's teammates hid his thumb drive in a bust of Margaret Thatcher. So now he's trying to track down the bust of Margaret Thatcher with everyone's info on it and Sherlock catches the assassin and they wrestle for a bit about it. Sherlock meets Mary like, I know who you are now, and Mary's like, sniff this, and Sherlock's like, okay. Oh my god, I'm having a f***ing heart attack. I gave myself permission to have an ugly life. I'm not running, I promise you that, I just need to do this in my own way. She said relax. <laughs> But I don't want you and Sherlock hanging off my gun arm. I'm sorry, my love. John and Mary have a conversation about how Mary shouldn't have run off to protect John and how John wished she'd stay behind so that they could work out things together like partners, all while Sherlock mopes in the corner because he also ran away to protect John from assassins and life just sucks! Okay? It- it sucks. I'm sorry. We're all gonna die someday. We aren't meant to be happy. I'm just gonna, I can't even afford to be here right now. I'm like, our family makes like 19,000 a year. And this college costs 64,000. What am I even doing with my life? I need to go find myself a husband who loves me. Assassin guy shows up and gets killed. The team go back home, the baby exists. Sort of. Sherlock finds out that this lady named Norbury from the secret committee thing doomed Mary's team to failure a couple years ago, and then Sherlock teases her for it, and she fires a gun at him, but- Surprise. You know, I really liked Mary. She was so cool and clever and unpredictable and funny. I saw a junkie lying in a puddle of his own blood last week. I saw a cyclist get hit by a car. But hope is for presidents, and dreams are for people who are sleeping. John is grief-stricken, and he sends Sherlock away when Sherlock comes over to help out. It's, uh, it's from John. Right. You don't need to read it now. Okay. What's in the letter? What's in the letter? What? You're not... You're... You're not gonna tell us what's in the letter? <laughs> no. No way. You... You got it. What did the letter say? What did the letter? Are you never going to tell us what the god letter said? <laughs> Some dude named Culverton drugs his friends with this. Sh that makes them forget everything he says, and then he's like, I need to kill someone. And his daughter manages to remember that he said that, but she doesn't know who he wants to kill. And then zoom ahead a couple years, and Sherlock is high off his <laughs> The daughter shows up like, what the is that about with Culverton however many years ago? And Sherlock's like, Then the two of them go out for chips because the daughter's suicidal and she has a cane. I love it. You think I'm kidding you? No! I, I, I genuinely love this! They- Sherlock and the daughter work so well off each other, and the editing- The cinematography in this segment is outstanding. Like, go watch this analysis video right now. John's seeing a new therapist at his house when Miss Hudson f***ing shreds it to his house with Sherlock in the trunk. I'm high. I'm mad at you. Let's go take down a criminal mastermind. Okay. Culverton's like, I own everything, including this hospital, and I'm not a serial killer. And Sherlock's like, yes you are, I talked to your daughter. And Culverton's like, psych, you didn't, and here she comes now. But if that's Culverton's real daughter, then who's flying the plane? 
The plane. The plane. The plane. The plane. And then this happens. Is this a game? Bloody game. That was certainly a thing that happened. Turns out Culverton runs a murder hospital, and he gets off on suffocating random patients. He tries to kill Sherlock, but John saves him at the last minute. Plot twist, Mary left a post-mortem DVD telling Sherlock to go f*** himself, and that's why he was high the whole episode. Then we get a hug. <laughs> And it turns out the girl John flirted with, the fake Culverton daughter, and John's therapist are all the same person. Sherlock's secret sister.
I call this song Queer Bait. I don't even know how to describe what happened here. There was like the sister that Sherlock had when he was a kid and she was lonely so she dropped Timmy down a well and Sherlock turned the memory into a dog and Sherlock's sister spent the rest of her life trapped in a secret prison except she wasn't trapped because she got everyone in the prison on her side and she could kind of leave at any time and she got curious about Sherlock so she lured him, John, and Mycroft to her prison where she put them through some escape room bull <laughs> Anyway, Sherlock's sister's like, here's Molly on the phone and if you don't get her to tell you that she loves you in like two minutes, I'm gonna blow her up because that's what the audience wanted to see after seven years of queer coding. Forced straight love confessions. You don't want to be told it's all in your head Cause if it's all in your head That's terrible I forgot to mention that all throughout the episode there's this girl stuck on a plane and all the other passengers are dead but the whole thing turns out to be a metaphor <laughs> Oh my god in the end, Sherlock and his sister hug, and he saves John from a well, possibly by detaching John's feet, and then there's another post-mortem Mary clip and Mary narrates over the top of the ending. My Baker Street boys, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson.